Welcome back to the 99, where we are focused on brewing a better competitive commander. I'm your host, Patrick Marlad, and earlier today I had the boys over on a Discord call to discuss Ikoria Lair of Behemoths, as well as a trifling of cards from Commander 2020. The focus today will be on Ikoria Lair of Behemoths. But just so you guys know, before stepping into this video, it was all screen recorded on my laptop. There may be a few odd sounds, there might even be a humming from the fan of my laptop. Please. Uh, take my apology on this one. Forgive me for the noises you're likely about to hear. However, uh, I did get everyone's opinion in in clear, pristine audio for the most part, for as long as our signals will hold out. But as you guys know, that's just the way of the world right now. But on that note, before we jump into this video discussing all those new cards, guys, if you want to help out the channel indirectly, you can do so through our partners over at TCG Player. Gang, order all your singles, packs, all those good goods, Yu-Gi-Oh cards, over on TCG Player. Anything we mention today that we think is of value that you are interested in picking up, you might as well help support the channel while you do so. So if you use the link in the description, a portion of those proceeds will go to help out the channel. And if you want to help out the channel directly, you can do so via Patreon. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do the shout out at the end of this video for our Patreon fans. Of course, you guys know this already, but up until we hit 99, Patreon members, I'll be saying everyone's name um, to that point. And I think we have 20 or 21 Patreon backers now. So thank you guys for all of your support. You're amazing. Um, and as I was teasing at just earlier, gang, um, I'm going to date this video. But if you are in any industry affected by COVID-19, uh, please take care of yourself, your family, your friends, first and foremost. And then you can worry about picking up singles and packs and cardboard and supporting this channel afterwards. Those things are far more important. So without further ado, let's just jump into this video. I hope you guys enjoy it. It is a long one. Uh, minimal editing on my part, which is really nice. But do note, this is a Discord call. So you're going to see me shifting between everyone's faces while we have this conversation. I hope you enjoy it, guys. How are you all doing in, uh, in these quarantine times? Perfectly quarantined. Um, having a great time, per per personally. A little depressed, but not anymore because I got my pals. Well, pals. Glad to be here. So, guys, well, um, we're going to discuss a little bit of C20 and then a little bit, I mean, a lot of it, of Icoria. I think we're just going to do a brief overview for you all for what you should be picking up from C20. There's really not much to say. Um, I, by the time I briefly covered it, I kind of covered all of it. I was surprised there wasn't really much else introduced. Uh, but is there anything you guys want to talk about from C20 that tickled your fancy? Anything I missed? Uh, what did you like from C20? Not really. Like the notable things are the the free spells. Aside from the green, as you said before, uh, Sharp Boy and the flying dude, and mm -hmm. probably this mountain wave and something else. Like there's nothing too much. This for this expansion, like. All previous, like probably all commander, are toned down. At least on the latest three, four expansion, they're toned down a lot mm -hmm. to cater more to casuals, which is fine. I, I understand that it's, it's fun, but it's not for the CDH crowd. There's only certain cards, like the free spells. I mean, the free spells are pretty busted. Um, and I know we talked about this a, a few times, but I feel like the gap between monocolor and non-monocolor is only growing, and it, it really sucks because I love my mono blue. And you're specifically stating that because when you get spells that are free and or not inhibited by their casting cost, right? Because um, even some of these free spells are like three generic, one black. So it's not difficult to tie in with your deck, even if it's not activated. Let's just be honest though. I think 90% of the time those free spells are probably gonna be activated. It really depends on your commander and what you're going for. But the gap is widening because all of these cards are gonna be accessible in all these multicolored lists. And the first ones that come to mind are the five colored list, all your partners, the decks that are gonna just thrive off of having more and more utilities. And you know, that has always been a benefit of playing multicolored cards from the get-go so mm -hmm. I, mean, I guess i guess it only makes sense and it's even worse because some of the partners are under costed like thrasios or timna which are the key ones they're two and three mana so nagila nagila you even, get all and Nag nagila. Oh, so those cheap commanders <laughs> make the spells even better 
because they just enter super fast, turn one, turn two. It, mm -hmm. There's an incentive now to actually play them fast. And that makes all the spells even more dangerous. Because before, it was like, oh, I can wait until he plays his commander or steals someone's commander, then I can start worrying about it. But right now, they can do turn one Dork, turn two Timna. Oh. <laughs> now things get dangerous because I don't know if they can have Force of Will, if they can have Pact of Negation. They can have the the free negate that I forget the name of because I haven't tilted enough up about it, and or even force of negation. So there's four fierce fierce guardianship, um, and and this also just prompted the discussion that gilded drake gets even better. Yes, <laughs> actually, there should be an argument right now for stuff like phantasmal image. That's interesting. Because it's a two mana clone. I'm not sure if the ruling itself. I don't think it works. copies it... the fact that it's your commander, though. But Gilded Drake, certainly anything that will oh. steal a commander is going to give you commander. So if you guys didn't yeah. read the card specifically, and I can go ahead and read one off now, um, I've got Flawless Maneuver in front of me. It should be on the screen. But if you control a commander, you may cast this spell without paying its mana cost. So again, it doesn't need to be your commander. The requirements are so slight on these effects. It's not very difficult to get this activated, because there are things that we just inherently do in Competitive Commander that are going to give us commanders, Gilded Drake being uh, obviously the largest effect that just gives you a commander, especially in some of those blue decks like Justin's Naromea, where you're not always going to have your commander out. So there's it's doubly beneficial, that card. Um, but, you know, again, Flawless Maneuver, all those free spells are very just good in and of themselves, because they're very easy to get active. Um, mm -hmm. But that's really all we wanted to talk about from uh, Commander 2020. Again, mm -hmm. uh, Braylon, I don't know if, partner. I don't know if we have an, anything to say about <clears throat> the influence of these cards in other formats. Obviously, the free spells don't work because well, Commander. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if like, Legacy, Vintage, or Cube care about any of these cards. I don't know. Just is the one with the Cube, so... I mean, it's not necessarily the free spells, but there's some like interesting cards in here that Cube might use. Like the um, the whale, the delving whale, is actually pretty interesting, and I wonder if that's going to see any legacy play or modern play. Like, what do you what do you think? Because you play more of those formats, Ernesto. Uh, obviously, these are not legal in modern. It's only legacy, and in okay, legacy, legacy. they are they are they are really over costed. Or the effect is not strong. That's There's what. just better options. Her. That's interesting. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. It's not, 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 not like they're not powerful enough. It's not true in Nemesis, which changed the whole format when it came out. Stuff like that. Yeah, I'm sure. So, guys, uh, with that, I'm just gonna swiftly bring us to Ikoria. But before that, I just want you guys to know the screen recording. In case you're wondering, we are using Discord for this. So, if you see anything pop up on my screen as I'm switching between our faces, uh, that is why. But to start us off, I want to go through the color pie as they've arranged it on uh, Watsi's site. So I'm at magic.wizards.com. There should be links to both C2020 and, of course, Ikoria Lair of Behemoths there. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one we're going to talk about, and it might be the only one uh, that's in white. You've gotten my opinion on this card already, but Dranith Magistrate. Guys, tell, give me your two cents. What do you think about Dranith Magistrate? <clears throat> I, um, this is a card that... I mentioned to you as soon as it was spoiled, and I'm like, does this defeat the idea of Commander? Because it's like, is this something that could potentially be banned because it's so strong? And I feel like, in at least in CDH, every single deck that can have white will play this card because it turns off everyone else's Commander, and it's asymmetrical. It doesn't affect you, and it's so... It's so relevantly costed, just one in a white. It anyone can be. flash it. Anyone can play it. It is fantastic. It is the bane of commander-based strategies. It's a very good card, and you should pick it up. I agree. I think it should be double white. I just want to tack on to what you're saying there. It, 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 I honestly think this effect should be in a double white creature. It is as good in certain, in most circumstances as Grand Abolisher is. You know what I mean? Um, but that's just my opinion. I think it's pretty damn good. Nesto, I know uh, you might have thoughts on this guy too. I, I'll just be honest. I'll just be brutally honest. I don't like the card. I get why it exists. It shuts off all the flashback strategies in other formats because mm -hmm. this is for standard. This Correct. is not for, for commander. But it hits us incidentally. Like, just not directly, just hits us. However... You know 
The big thing I don't like about this card is that it breaks parity by itself. It yeah. should be no player can cast it. Then the card becomes mm -hmm. goes from being absolutely busted to one third two to being good. Because then you need to balance of the, the idea of am I playing my commander and then the creature? Or am I leaving the creature first so other people can play and I don't care much, as much about my command? Like list, for example, but it cannot. But the style of a Kess that can play mostly spells and doesn't really depend on the commander. Sure, if if you have it, if you have her out, it's it's amazing. But if you don't, you don't really fold in those style of decks. Sure, the the creature if it said everyone cannot play, that would be super fine. But as it is right now, I don't think the card is... Oh, Justin died. It's fine. I'll, I'll pop back in. Okay. <laughs> and as, as it is the card itself right now, I think if you land it in the early turns, it's backbreaking. Yeah. But, 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 it's kind of dead in the later stage of the game. Because at that point, anyone can actually say like, oh, just kill it and keep going. Yeah. In, yeah. So, you might see people actually mulligan aggressively for this guy. I find Which it so interesting bad. that we're complaining about a white card. It, we've So, like, <clears throat> they, they definitely increase white's power level with this card alone. Um, but it, I feel like they're having a hard time deciding, at least for CDH on our level, they're not really building for our format, but it's either this is just not good at all, or this is just way too good. The, the in-between is very hard to hit. Mm -hmm. For power creep, man. It's the power creep. Yeah. I, th I think it's great. I think it's going to be a must include in any list that you can put it in, like Justin said. Uh, it's extremely viable in CDH as well as casual. And again, I'm still concerned that it's something that might see banning because I feel like folks are going to complain enough about this card. It's that valuable. It's just, it, what it really encourages you to do is just put more single target removal in your list, okay? If you're not using enough wipes and or single target removal. And what's funny is the common wipes in at least CDH, the Clasms of the world, we mostly cap it off at two because that hits most of our threats. This guy being 1-3 is so relevant. And you know, again, as Ernesto said, this wasn't a card made for specifically Commander, but damn, were they? Does it feel like they were thinking about it? You know. Well, um, well they do have a the safety valve of the banning. If anything happens, they just axe the card and keep yeah. going playing the game. Am I crazy? Do you guys uh, think this could get banned? Uh, I don't think so because this incentivizes casuals to play more interaction. Okay. It's like if if you don't play interaction after seeing this card. Then you're playing magic wrong, in my opinion. Okay. I feel like this is going to change. Just them. <clears throat> this is going to change a lot of people's mindsets about interaction in general, and I, I think a card that is going to see even casual play because why wouldn't you play this? Um, and I think a lot of people are going to get pissed off, and a lot of people are going to change their deck building, a or they're going Wait. to complain, and then this card is going to get a little bit of the limelight of should we ban this? I don't think it's relevant to ban. I don't like seeing it in the format, but I'm glad White gets something. Yeah, yeah me too. And especially after the just horrible mess, like dumpster fire of the previous stacks piece or hate bear we received in Theros, which is the one that like was symmetrical. Planeswalkers cost one more. They're activated. That there's that complete garbage card that is never going to see play in any format. We got yeah. that. Um, and it hasn't seen any play. Don't yeah. worry about it. <laughs> so, like, thankfully, they they somewhat made up for that by having something that spans every format and is, is viable um, in a, a few different sites, um, a few different formats. But mm -hmm. uh, I, I actually I think, think that the, the the coming of this card will make cards like Fatal Push that were almost playable in the format before Fatal's will actually see a lot of play right now. Fatal's really good. I think Fatal's exactly. underrated, like heavily underrated. And again, I, I agree with you. Um, Black has always had really solid removal and Fatal Push is one of those things. You just have to crack a fetch, guys, and you can start killing those four CMC things. Um, so you do need to Even freaking Lightning Bolt. Even just, exactly, exactly. It's just, it's so potent. Um, but gang, uh, I think at this point, this really covers white. From Ikoria, if I'm not mistaken, is, I don't. Is it, is it, no, that can't be. I don't That's think it? there's anything else from Ikoria Lair Behemoths in white that really 
you know, got my attention. Correct me if I'm wrong. Do we care about the moth? The brood moth. We talked oh, about the moth. Well, I, I just to brush over Luminous Brood Moth again, that is a combo card. You can use it. Um, and to piggyback off of what I said in the previous videos, uh, you should look at this for Persistent Undying. Uh, I think that strategy is more tight knit than looking at Solemnity. Solemnity's price is going to drop again. Uh, don't be on the bandwagon buying the overpriced solemnities of the world. It's just a dumb idea. There's one other thing that someone pointed out to me that's a combo card, yet I forget the combo piece for it, and I'm looking for it now. Uh, is there anything I missed, though, guys, from White that you feel is necessary? I don't, believe, um, I don't think it's for CDH, but for casuals, the new Cataclysm for in a Mardu deck. Which Cataclysm? Oh, so oh, busted. That's the, the Mythos. Seven. The Mythos. Do you want to read that off really quick? Do you have yes. Any? <clears throat> yes, I have it here. It's a mythos of snapbacks. It's two and two white. It's a sorcery, rare. It reads, each player just chooses an artifact, a creature, an enchantment, and a planeswalker from among the normal permanents they control, then sacrifices the rest. If black and red was spent to cast this spell, you choose the permanents for each play instead. So yes. it's, That's unfair. it's unfair to say this is a Cataclysm because Cataclysm hits lands. And that's the draw of Cataclysm, at least in cube. This, this is a card that has fantastic art. And if you look at the new Ceph um, Kickstarter, these are going to be playmats that you can pick, which is awesome. And I'll probably pick one up. However, do I think this is a Cataclysm worthy card? No, and I don't even think it'll see play in cube, at least not in my power cube. I did say casuals, because casuals, the, yes. the, the idea to choose, card, yes. choose your worst card and you keep that, then the rest yeah. is gone. That's harsh. That's really harsh. This is the combo that? card. This is that's the combo the card. Stormwild Caprador. Someone anyway. pointed this out to me. So guys, Stormwild Caprador, if you were wondering, I don't know why it took me so long to find them. Uh, it's a combo card. Um, I forget the combo, but someone either in Discord or on one of the previous YouTube videos told me about this combo. Two card combo, technically. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, that exists. So I'll let you decipher that. I, I honestly forget what the combo is, but... It just makes them infinitely big? Something like that, or like you get a lot of counters and you can do stuff with the counters. So get excited. Yeah, so I mean, there's that. Um, but I, I honestly think that that covers it for white. Um, I do think that pseudo clism is fine, um, but it's probably not going to see much play in CDH. I agree with uh, Justin on that. Uh, the next card I want to discuss was one of the last announced cards. Excellent art, really funny effect, um, especially when you look at the art. But Mystical Subduel. Mystic Subduel. Wait, that's the... That's the one that loses. Oh, 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 yes. So good. yes, it's yes, so, yes. Good. so it's <clears throat> one generic, one blue, enchant aura, flash, enchant creature. Enchanted creature gets minus two, minus zero, and loses all abilities. That's sort of the big, <laughs> the important part of this spell. This is a Lignify, but better. <laughs> like a be Kenrith's transformation. But Reputation. Yeah, I honestly think that having flash on this makes it that much more effective over any other effect that made a creature lose an ability before, like Dark Steel Mutation, mm -hmm. all those spells. We always talk about them. Um, we do think they are viable, but they rarely see play um, yeah. because of the timing restrictions on them. However, this uh, is a fantastic spell because it has that flash tacked onto it. And better yet, um, it could have just been loses all abilities and I think we would have found it viable. But if it's a big creature that still has the threat of swinging at you, you're also reducing its attack. So I think this will see play. I genuinely think this will see play. This will see play. It's on the level of Kendra's transformation. Sure, Kendra's transformation, as you said, has the timing restriction, but I don't think- draws a card. The draw. That's yeah. that's the key part because it replaces itself. This one is just flash. That, so they are kind of like two sides of the same coin. They have different value. Obviously, if you're playing blue green, you you choose either or, and if you're playing only one color, you choose the one you want. But this will see play. The removal of all abilities in a commander is on the level of not playing the commander. Yeah, you obviously have it. So uh, we did, we had the discussion a while back that even if you have the commander with uh, like loses all abilities enchantment, 
it's easier to get rid of the enchantment than to recast your commander and do something else. Because you will need to do extra work to get to kill your command and then recast it, then just get rid of the enchantment and keep going. Yeah, it's a temp it's a temporary solution in a sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I find this good. Justin, do you imagine playing this in Naru? Or um, so like we talk about spot removal in mono blue at least, and we have Pongify, rapid hybridization, and reality shift. And if anything, I think this is a better reality shift, at least for me. Yes, you can't um, Isochron, Scepter, Reality Shift, and have that as an alternate win con, but how many times are you actually doing that? And the meta's kind of shifted away from Isochron, Scepter regardless. I think this is a fantastic card. Um, I like that I can draw off of this with my uh, Hippocamp in Naramea. I like that it has Flash, and I think it's really relevant to turn off Commanders. Um, and sometimes I think it's actually easier to recast your commander, especially if you have a cheaper one. If you have an Agila, I think I'd rather do this to it and yeah. shut her off than for Ernesto to just go ahead and be like, oh, I'm just going to pay five next time for her. Because you can sometimes. You have such explosive starts that killing the commander isn't always the most useful thing. Sometimes just turning it off. If you do that to a specific color, um, there are in a lot, of, a lot of problems. Like... The Savala. I know Savala, you started to go for a more greedy build with Savala. Mm -hmm. How many enchantment destructions do you still run? I think we run something like three to four. Yeah. So it really depends on the list. Obviously, my even, Savala... Even the frog itself. Say that, for example, Gitro. Yeah. You, run, you, play, you put this on Gitro, and if they don't have value at that moment or the removal, what mm -hmm. do they have? They have like three, four removals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. This also... This those also Another thing that also we should talk about is that the Savala thing you were saying with the Magistrate, now you need to add more fight effects to get rid of that. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so it's like a, your turn, at least if you know you're playing against Savala, I think your priority should probably be to lay down the Magistrate. The good bit of news is that the rest of the board is going to want to remove Magistrate. And yes. the fact of the matter is I'm probably not going to be able to remove Magistrate. I, I genuinely don't think I have a way to kill a creature. You need, you need the elk. Do I not? Uh, Somberwald Stag or Cogla? Yeah, because you know what? <laughs> but the good, the good thing combo. about Magistrate. I love when we go back to Magistrate. Everyone hates this so card, good. so you're not going to be the only person that needs to try to get rid of this. Everyone's going to be helping you. I and I genuinely believe that's going to be the case. Now, guys, is there anything else in blue you feel like we should touch on? Um, I've heard mention of Ominous C. I've heard mention of a few mm -hmm. cards here. I don't know how CDH worthy they are, though. Um, the cycle enchantment is passable if you're yes. playing a more casually style you because need it's Shark Typhoon. No, 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 no. The um, the Astro Slide style. The well, escape, of... escape protocol. Speaking of Shark Typhoon, that is an incredible cube card. Oh yeah, it is so good. It's like um, someone was doing the map about this in Hydroid Crassus, and it's like until you hit like six or eight mana, this is basically a Hydroid Crassus in mono color. It's so good. It's a flash eat your creature while still drawing a card because you cycled. Um, keep in mind, you're almost never playing the enchantment version of this card. You're almost always just using it as the cycle, but it is very good. And I'm picking this up for Power Cube. This is a slam dunk. One card I love, I need to, I need to tell this card is of one mind. It's the a sorcery mm -hmm. two and a blue. Um, this spell costs two less if you control a human and a non-human creature, right, and yeah. then draw two cards. Guess what? Tars and Timna are <laughs> uh, elf and human, right? Am I right on that one? Uh, I'm gonna remember Thrasios. I think it's a elf. So if it's you like, have both, Thrasios is like a merman or something, but sure. Yeah, something like that. He's so. For one blue, it draw two cards. Sorcery, but who cares? It's the one blue that are two cards. What about cards. Yuriko? I think Yuriko might play this too. Uh, I think Yuriko's a She's human. human. She's human. And yeah, but, the, but, but her activators are not. So... There you go. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good card. It's a good, it's card. A good card. Another card that people have been making some noise about is Ominous Seas. It's the enchantment that yes, when you draw yes. a card, you put counters on it, remove... What deck runs that? I forgot. Because I saw a deck that... Any wheel! Yeah. Opus Thief, maybe we'll play this. So I don't what, know. Uh, can you read that one off for us, actually? Yes, Ominous. it's Ominous Seas. It's one and a blue, so it's two mana. It's super fast. Enchantment Uncommon. 
Whenever you draw a card, put a four shadow counter on ominous seas. Remove eight four shadow counters from ominous seas. Create an eight eight blue kraken creature token. And it has cycling too. So even if it's a dead card in the late game, you can just recycle it and get another thing that might be useful. Mm -hmm. It's a good card. Like it, yeah, it might actually see play in CDH. Even like it might, it might this. actually. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I was I was glossing over a list that actually wanted this, which was interesting. I need to find that list, but um, just to see that people would even consider this as a possible card. Like I know that boards get pretty stalled, and just having a giant eight eight crack and it's really good sometimes. It's kind of like an even slower Luminar Ascension. Yeah. And Luminar Ascension. Flying, but... It's still an 8 8. <laughs> I mean, in CD, in CDH, an 8 8 is like, mmm. <laughs> There's actually a couple of. Uh, I think that covers it for black. Uh, sorry, blue. Uh, for blue. blue. Yeah, pretty correct. much. Yeah. I'm looking over black right now. And there's a few that have been spoiled just uh, periodically that I, I missed once they came up, and some uh, that have been out for a while that are still really good as well. Like uh, mm -hmm. I, I want to start with I want to start with extinction event because I think this is actually a really decent wipe. And so it's three generic, one black for extinction event sorcery speed. Choose hot or even exile each creature with converted mana cost of the chosen value so this really punches up if you have to remove some things that are of even value uh, this punches up and kills them for four along with anything else and of course odd is just going to hit everyone's door along with potential commanders so at your thrasios of the world she's two timonos three um yeah, it's gonna sure. it's gonna hit a lot of things that you don't think about so if you're not in a creature heavy list or you don't care if your stuff or is this is another one of those funny cards that exiles. Um, yeah, this is a, it's a really solid wipe. I don't know what list is going to prefer this. There was a companion that cares about having your list be all odds or even. So maybe yeah, the all the permanents, I think. Yeah, if you're fooling I with think. that, if you're think. fooling with that companion, perhaps this is the right card for you. Uh, but Extinction Event is a really fantastic wipe that just came out. I think it slipped under the radar for me. But I, I, actually, don't, I actually don't dislike it because of what you said, Timna. Normally, Timna decks play a lot of Torques, of one mad Torques, and if you can land this on, on odds, and you don't care about your creatures, you just destroy the Timna player. Yeah. Even now, the meta is more Dork heavy, so oh, yeah. all this gains a lot of value. An Exile, so... Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't think it will see play, but it's a good card. I don't think it's, it's a good a card. I think it's too restrictive, especially from a cube mindset. I would not even come close to this in power cube. Um, wow. I want a more generic effect that's going to hit everything, and I don't want to have to worry about what you're running. Now, if we talk about CDH, um, I still don't know if this is uh, in a multicolor list. Hell no. In a mono black list, I don't know if you might want this. You might want this. Uh, what do you have that you want instead? Like Damnation? Damnation, obviously, and Toxic Deluge, but... Um, no, I, don't, I think this is a miss. If you're hurting for mass removal, though, in mono black, you're not really going to hit anything in that one spot as a creature. I think you're going to be fine playing it. Um, and what's you, nice what is you, that you would you say this card? With it. What's that? Would you say this card will be playable if it were three mana instead of four? Oh, easily. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. But I think they've made that mistake with Deluge before because that's immediately playable. Like that that doesn't that slots into every list. Making this three CMC would have made it hyper viable. Uh, I totally agree with that. As it stands now though, Mass Exile, that's pretty dope. I mean, I can't think of anything else that operates that same way in the 4CMC slot that Exiles. In the uh, exact same way, no, but there's stuff like Anger of the Gods, which is yeah. the, the three damage Exiles. But... Yeah, yeah. Not bad. Um, there was another piece of removal that came out in black that I think when it came up, like we all agreed that this was just a better, this is one of the better destroy effects that black has received in a while, because usually the two CMC destroy effects are limited in their range or scope of like what they can get rid of. But mm -hmm. Heartless Act for one generic, one black, instant speed, modal spell, destroy target creature with no counters on it, or remove up to three counters from target creature. Uh, that's very that's very easy to do, both scenarios. Like, if you're just fighting my Marath, you can just say, I'm going to remove three counters from Marath, Marath's dead. If you're fighting any against any other deck that doesn't care about counters, because I don't think counters is a really relevant strategy yet, you can just mm -hmm. kill that said creature you know what i'm saying like it's very easy to get the kill with this effect is it a better 
Go for the throat in CDH. For sure. I but go for, the, go for the throat is not even played in CDH. Like, let's I mean, be honest. It, it's just just to see removals. It has to be really good to actually be played. I think this really is better good. Than, I think this is better than go for the throat for sure. And you'll use well, it if yeah. you're in mono black. Like if you're in mono black, you're using this. Do I think you'll use this in multicolored list? There's usually better yep. effects, but as it stands, this is a really potent ability. And if you do find yourself needing to remove counters from something, this is one of the cheapest cards to do so at instant speed. Uh, that's practical. Yeah. That's still very practical. Yeah. Sorry, bud. Uh, but and this is amazing. This is amazing in cube because cube, at least power cube, runs so many artifact creatures, and to be able to hit those creatures now is fantastic. And cube is definitely running go for the throw. And I can totally see that more lists will opt for more single target removal on CDH. And this is a good addition. This is how you're going to kill your magistrates. Yeah, that's true. That's true. We had a, we have other options stated before to remove the magistrate that are, are more effective. Yeah. But if you're in a pinch and you simply need to play the real card, this is not bad. Like I will, I will actually play it. This, is, this, is, this is great for budget. Yeah, exactly. For budget, it's amazing. I, I will play like Doom, Doom Blade or Go, Go, but this is oh, this is budget. miles better than Doom Blade. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. 100%. That non-black and CDH is everything because all the things you want to remove are black. So, guys, what do you think about truth? Truth. I think that predominantly covers everything in black that uh, is of value, that is, is noteworthy. I, I would like to point that one card. Point it out. It's Suffocating Fumes. Uh, the black instant for three mana, it's your opponent's creatures get minus one, minus one until the turn. Okay. Cycling but up. it has cycle. The good thing is it has cycle. Okay. So it's um, the spectral, not the uh, serious persecution. Not as good because you, it doesn't bump your creatures, but it at least cycles itself and you can play it in any DX deck, which I think it's it's not the best, not even close, because it's three mana. Why would you play this when you can play Toxic Deluge? Yeah. But in a dark heavy meta, I think this could give some value. Would and Anya again, use this? Would Anya use this? Would Anya want to use this? Uh, for sure. I don't see why she wouldn't. It, it helps to have the card draw outside of madness effects because sometimes your role does get stopped if you don't hit the madness card. So having a mix of madness and cycling wouldn't be bad. It wouldn't be an off strategy. Obviously, you're, you're going to generally focus on madness effects, but if you can get a utility yep. attached uh, with cycle, um, there's no reason not to. It's not a bad card. Yeah. But we don't have the we don't have the mana to cycle though. Because every time I see you play Anya, you're like stuck on three, four lands. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're uh I don't know how know how. Yeah, well you're trying to do a lot with a little in that list. At least that's how I run it. Um I'd like to try to go off on turn three or four if possible, but you do lack certain elements to get you there. I mean, even with rituals and such, it is difficult to get her out by turn two uh, part of the time, which is generally the goal. Uh, that having mana for cycling is kind of steep. I think the cycling effects you want to run are generally going to cost one CMC to cycle, but mm -hmm. I mean, that's just, that's personal preference. You can add this in and be totally fine. I, I do think there are better ways to remove uh, dorks though, sadly. Mm -hmm. um, no, but, I agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is, that is it's a good not one. Bad. It's no. not bad because it plays itself. That's the only thing. Yeah. One other card that I'd like to point out, Black, that we obviously forgot, is Whisper's Squad. No. Um, <laughs> call of the Death uh, Call of the Death Dweller. Three mana sorcery. Yeah. Uh it has it's basically a double unearth on one single card. And it's even better because it pumps them. Doesn't have cycle though, but what was the card before that? It it was victimized? Was the one that like you sacrifice a creature and you get two back? Y yes, I think so. Yes. This is this just yeah. Oh, yeah. It's better. Obviously, <laughs> okay. Let me read the cards so people can understand what we're talking about. Is Call of the Death Waller is two in a black sorcery and common. Return up to two target creatures with total converted mana cost three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Put a death touch counter on either of them, then put a menace counter on either of them. It's kind of like a mini Hulk in a sense that reanimates from your graveyard. So you know, it gives you resilience when you're trying to go off. They kill your. If they stop you, they you can just reanimate Oracle. Yeah. 
and uh, what's the what's the dude that draws one? Uh, Hubless researcher, I think it is. Mm. So, for it's, example, um, it's like unearth with upside. Yeah, yeah. I remember this getting announced. I think it is a little. I, I'm not sure how excited Black is to get this, but it could be used in a multicolored list to some effect. It's almost like a lesser Savine's Reclamation and its ability to hit yeah. permanence. However, if you have a creature-based strategy, this is going to be very successful. I also like that the, the counters are just like, just icing yeah, on the cake. Worth. It could honestly have just been three mana, recover two, three CMC creatures. You're already going up, right? So if you get two, three CMC creatures, you, you just got six mana worth of spell for three mana, right? So the fact that you can make one harder to block and then you can just make one a, an amazing blocker with Death Touch um, is pretty potent, especially at Uncommon. Like, you're going to get a few copies of this. If you do have a creature-based strategy, I think this is the way to go. It's interesting that you would... Um, to use this to recover Oracle? That's interesting. I, I'm wondering... It's an idea. This is yeah. the first thought I had in my mind. Is Unearth I probably, Sorcery or I Instant? Really play, this, play this in... I will see myself play this in Agila when they remove, for example, Mindblade Render and a Dork. Yeah. You can get both back or triple dork and run back. Because this is super splashable, it's only one black. In, mm -hmm. in that sense, I think it has value. I don't know how much value. I will need to so test the card. Najila is also 3 CMC, so you could just let yes. Najila die. If you're conscious that you have this in your hand, you can let Najila die and then never put her back in the command zone so the next time she does go, then you'll get the tax. That's actually not a True. bad idea. Yeah. Um, and yeah. give her menace and death touch. Because why the hell not? I want to make <laughs> warriors every single turn. Yeah. Oh, Menace, you want to block Menace me? is annoying. Menace is annoying, but Death Touch, I'm going to kill her. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> um, hey. Yeah. You know what? No, that was, that's what you're going to do. That was a really solid card. I, I agree with that one. That's definitely noteworthy. Um, there's a lot of really interesting cards that came out in red that I enjoy. The big one that I think is going to slot into a lot of Goto list. Uh, is fiery, uh, rather fire prophecy. If you guys remember sure. this one, it's one generic, one red for an instant speed spell. Fire prophecy deals three damage to target creature. You may put a card from your hand on the bottom of your library. If you do, mm -hmm. draw a card. I love to see red get a utility like this a damage effect tacked on with a draw effect, tacked on with if you in Godo, if you have Helm of the Host in your hand. You're not dead because of it, but it's not a good place to have that, you know, spell. You definitely want that in your library so you can pull it back out with some Goto shenanigans, twin flaming after you get the hammer of Nizan, yada, yada, yada. You put the helm out. This is benefiting you doubly. It's letting you put the helm back in your deck and draw a card. So you're, you're never going to go, you do lose one card by playing this spell, but when you rummage, which is essentially like you discarding this, but getting the value back in your deck you still go up one. It's uh, it's fantastic. So you're not only removing a threat, because Goto is a 3-3, three, three, right? Um, you're not only removing a threat from Goto, you're also just getting the ability to get your Helm of the Host back in the deck. I, I think this card is fantastic. There's obviously more uses for this outside of Goto, but that was the first one that came to most people's minds, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. yeah. I, this kind of ties in, into what you said, one of your videos, about the color pie being kind of muddied and the lines blurring between each color because the effect itself is kind of red but also kind of blue yeah because the shuffling a card from your hand and drawing one is kind of like a blue effect more than the ramage of saying i'm gonna discard and draw the typical red that you will know mm -hmm. <clears throat> so this is kind of like weird in that sense i like that card though i really like it kills much straight which is big <laughs> but keep in mind this is a very linear effect because only to target creature yes, so like, yes at least for cube this is a miss because you're not hitting players and players are important because you can hit their planeswalkers um yeah yeah is it is it a go to only card it might only be a go to only card you know what's funny ah. though i mean i think Gr grenzo dungeon warden um by the way would probably want this so grenzo dungeon warden if you guys don't know who that is he's x and Rakdos. I'm going to read the important ability here. So, uh, pay, pay two, the put the bottom card of your library into your graveyard if it's a creature card with power less than or equal to Grenzo's power. So, this is an enabler, another enabler for Grenzo. You just put the creature at the bottom of your library and you can pull yeah. it back from your grave. It's actually a really smart utility for Grenzo as well. I was like, there's one more commander I know that this is relevant for. 
Um, mm -hmm. But I mean, honestly, if it's just to get a draw effect, if it's, I don't need this land, I'm going to cycle it. You know what I mean? I, I still get to draw a card from some chaff in my hand. This is a really good top deck. Like three damage is going to hit, uh, kill most opponent, opposing oh, commanders. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like this Savala player was stopped. So like, that's not good enough. I'm just going to kill Savala, draw a card and now continue with my turn. Like. I, I love how potent fire prophecy is. Um, I don't know if I'm slotting this necessarily into something like Neheb, but it is a really solid effect. I wish this had an extra damage for at least Prince Walkers. Not the three damage, because three damage for two at Prince Walkers Walker is with upside, it's big, but a problem like a ping or a shock, something to do with a Plains Walker, because only creatures is too restrictive. It's too narrow. Yeah. Yep, yeah, exactly. It's too restrictive. Sure, if you want the effect to remove a creature in red, you can play this. This is really good. But why play this when you can play Lightning Ball? Let's be honest. <laughs> Lightning Ball, you can point it at anything. Even Fry, it's better because you can uh, point it to a Plains Walker. So, like, you dead now. Yeah. This is this is outside of the. This two is good though. This can, is good. Yeah, outside of the two decks we just can uh, discuss, this is not good. Mm -hmm. So probably uh, no. Probably Narset would like no. this. No, no. If you have like if you have, your hand is like turns, you just shuffle a turn into a deck and throw another thing. It's not the worst, but. Why will you do that when you can just twist her and go in, but whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of Narsa, I will and probably Neheb and other stuff like that. I would like to point out Footfall Crater. Yeah. The enchantment on a land that gives a creature trample and haste. Which, as you we all know, Narsa and Neheb really like those activators for haste for mm -hmm. free. I think that this card has existed before. I, I, it, there's a card that does the same thing nearly, but doesn't provide trample. If I'm not it's the, I don't know. It's actually the cycling that's new, I believe. That with a cycling, the cycling is new. Okay, yeah. so which um, is good. It's and, really good. And you guys think that with cycling, I mean, the cycling cost is one. I mean, how does super cheap? You definitely want to run this for that alone. Do I think I'm going to run it in the Um Probably. I mean, mind you, yeah. you're you're getting rid of some mana by tapping this, you know, lands. You're you're gonna lose out on some mana, but you do gain mana when you attack with Neheb. Um, what sucks about that list though is you do need a certain threshold of mana and cards in hand to really take advantage of the wheels and the multiple combat spells in the in the deck. It's a hard deck to to balance. So how many haste effects we actually leave in the list is difficult to say. Um, I do run Hollow the Bandit Lord and Hanwar Garrison. I think it's the. No, Hanwar. Hanwar Garrison, yeah. Yeah. Those are the two lands that you need. I, I, yeah, I have two haste enabling lands already. So do we need an effect that makes a land a haste enabler? I don't see why not. I mean, we do. Um, we, could, we could use that to a benefit. I remember how so many times last year you were looking for haste enablers uh, for Neheb and you were seeing if any of them were viable. And I feel like if this, this uh, anything is pretty decent because even if you don't have your Neheb or you already have him and he, he has haste or you start your turn with him, you can just rummage this. I mean, you can rummage it with his ability regardless, yeah. but it's a decent card to look at, at least for a deck that needs to hit now. Yeah. No, I agree. This, actually, I agree. this this competes in the slot of Need for Speed, though, which Need for Speed is, I'd probably say, better because you, you sacrifice don't lose a land. Mana. Is that true? Yes, sack a land and give a creature haste. It's yeah. the haste enabler for Narset, for example. Mm -hmm. Like the one most used, obviously, and boots because boots, boots are gas. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if this will see play because the argument of saying, "Oh, it has cycle," is good. But you also lose a land. You do. And yeah. that's like... <sighs> in a haste matters deck, you should probably see play, actually. Mm -hmm. Because, as Patrick said, you're already running um, haste enabler lands that they don't really add mana. Like, sure, Hold the Bandit Lord, you can add mana for any something else, but it bolts you for a colorless. 
Yeah. Sure. It's harsh. It's harsh. I wonder if it would How, be better uh, just to put a utility land in, or just even a flat mountain, and then just that, give yourself, give yourself the haste enabling enchantment, because that turn is practically going to look like Hall of the Bandit Lord dropping, because that comes into play tapped, right? So say if you had to tap that mountain to enchant it, at least you have the additive value of giving any creature trample haste and adding red, and within the same time frame as waiting for Hall of the Bandit Lord. You know what I mean? Even hung yeah. wire. Uh, but uh, battlements, I think it's red, red tap. and tap. Yeah. So it's even worse. In even the flame king village, which does the same thing, is the same effect. You need to red and tap it. So in that sense, do you really lose that much playing this card instead of and just cutting those, and adding another mountain for more consistency? Mm. That's something to test. Yeah. No, I definitely but think that that's something to look into. I'm gonna. Go over the enchantments, all the enchantments that allow for haste enabling. That might be the better route to go, especially this one because you can cycle it early game or even mid to late if Neheb's out and get value elsewhere if you still have a way to haste enable him because you do want to start attacking when you can. But speaking of Neheb, um, this is something that uh, I've always touted is the most important ability in Neheb. Uh, this is Dreadhorde Champion, of course. Raking Claws which is generic and a red instant speed. Target creature gains double strike until the end of turn, cycling two. Um, and if you guys don't remember, Neheb cares about dealing combat damage. It's how he rummages, gains mana, draws cards. Um, oh, I missed that card. Yeah, I know, me too. Uh, someone pointed it out in the <laughs> Discord. Thank you. Uh, for uh, Neheb, this is an excellent effect. It's just a better uh, Fury swipes, or there's some over-costed uh, double strike effects yeah. in the deck, and having a two CMC one Blood Mist. Is, Blood Mist. <laughs> yeah. Well, Blood Mist is still pretty valid in my opinion. We're probably going to run Blood Mist anyways, because to have it reoccurringly and every creature gets it, or target creature, it doesn't matter. It's going to be Neheb, right? Um, Raking Claws is just another one of those effects. That's going to be good in that deck. Not really uh, notable for anyone else, though. No. Fair. Yeah, it's, it's okay. Uh, so far as Red is concerned, there's one more card I want to mention that I neglected to mention. And someone pointed out that this is very good at hitting a very particular hate piece. Shredded Sails. One generic, one mm. red, instant speed, choose one. Destroy target artifact or deal damage to uh, deal four damage to target creature with flying, cycling two. You're gonna notice this trend. There's just a lot of cycling added to really solid effects. So this hits, notably, Linvala, Keeper of Silence, and or Cursed Toto. So if your deck relies on shutting those things down, because you are mm. going to try to go off with activated abilities that, from your creatures, this hits both of them. I thought that was really smart. I'm like, I didn't immediately make that connection. I don't know if it was made for that reason, but yeah. it's very true. And honestly, that that is probably valuable for a lot of lists. I mean, I can see this going into, obviously, uh, Marath, because I win off of activating my creatures, and those two things are going to shut me down. So one card... Yeah eliminates two threats. So Shredded Sail is definitely viable. Um, if you need to get rid of Cursed Totem, Linvala, they're relevant threats. But even still, just destroying an artifact on the upside that there isn't a Linvala uh, is still really practical in my opinion. I mean, mm -hmm. you can kill Azur with this, you can kill most of this. Exactly, like most of the flying creatures I can think of that are nuisances, you can remove with this particular spell. I'm going to plug in is my this, laptop, guys. Give me is this for second. CDH, at least for uh, Marath, where you're so worried about your activated abilities, this is better than a braid for you because you can hit the Lamala? I think with, so not, I, fortunately enough, we I don't see that many Linvalas go against me except for Ernesto on occasion. So it's not the biggest threat in my mind. However, I do think that this is slightly better than a braid in Marath, particularly the fact that you can cycle this um, just gives you that much more value. I don't believe a braid has cycle attached to it. It's just three damage and no. a creature or player slash. Not player. Not player. Just, just creature. Oh. Dude, if it's a player, it will be MVP in every thought, single way, hit, um, all the way to vintage. Yeah, I, I thought it could hit... Um, <laughs> I'll be gas. <laughs> I thought it could hit Planeswalkers, but maybe... No, no, just creatures. Oh, wow. Yeah, It's no. still one of the best removals oh, no. in the game. Oh, in no, red. no. I certainly, <laughs> um, I'm certainly running a braid in a lot of my lists. I do think Shredded Sales deserves a lot more credit, though, <laughs> than I'm giving it. Uh, it's definitely going to be played, and I'll definitely slot it into Marath, for sure. Without a doubt. Mm -hmm. I like it. 
if you're looking for more of the fun side of cards, looking at you, Brendan, <laughs> looking at you, Unpredictable Cyclone. Just looking at that right now. Ah, see, see? Yes. So, Unpredictable, Unpredictable Cyclone, it's three and double red, so it's kind of restrictive in the cost. Enchantment, rare. Watch out because there's a lot, a lot of text. Has cycle two. So let's begin with the easy part. It says, if a cycling ability of another non-land card would cost you to draw a card, instead exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a card that shares a card type with a cycle card. You may cast that card without paying its mana cost. Then put the exile creature cards that weren't cast this way on the bottom of your library in a random order. So it's kind of um possibility storm, but only for cycling. Obviously, obviously this is not CDH. This is clearly not CDH. No. This, this no. Is for we don't have enough viable cycling effects anywhere. Um this set gave us a lot, but I don't think so. <laughs> I think this is well now fluctuator got reprinted so no. Maybe. No. <laughs> <laughs> There's another card, I think it's called Reality Scramble. There's like a monkey on it, and then it has a very similar-ish effect to this, if I'm not mistaken. Don't, you can look it up, Reality Scramble. Um, so, is this effect valid? Sure, but you yes. really gotta build around it. You really have to build around this. I do think it's a fun, quirky, cool card for those building the cycling list. If you have a cycle deck, uh, this might be viable to you, especially if what sucks here is it encourages you to only put in so many non-land permanents with said cycling effect so that you can hit the other one in a given moment. That conceptually is what you want to do. It's sort of like being able to cascade into the right card of choice. Um, unpredictable right. Cyclone, that is part of the naming of it, actually. It's unpredictable. So it's a quirky mm -hmm. card. I don't know. You really got to build around it to make it viable. But you could probably make it like a kind of like a Mr. Frost Wild Ride deck with this and Fluctuator. If you can get both and all your deck is cycles, it's like so much. You flick your deck. It's a it's an old deck in Legacy. It's it's bad, really bad. Um, it just it uses Fluctuator to reduce all the cycling in your hand to zero, all the cycling in your deck to zero. Then you cycle everything and you says uh, Call of the Grave to get all the cards you play back into your hand. So you loop your deck. I want to play you, this. You just, you just draw your deck. I don't remember exactly how it won. That's but so there was good. A, there was a way to win. I, I think it was tendrils. I just said yeah. tendrils due to death or something. You need to look it up. I think uh, Saffron Olive made a video on this a wow. while back. So you could revisit it. It sounds. Anyway. Sounds what? Oh, if you lose Fluctuate, oh, the deck is dead. <laughs> you do nothing. <laughs> Justin's wild ride, please. That's fun. So look guys, it up. Um, it's, it's fun. I think that covers it, essentially. For we're done with Brad. Yeah, so that's pretty much right. I think we're just spouting nonsense now. But I do want to yeah. start with a really Even the Plains Walker is back. Enough of you. Yeah. Green. green? <laughs> so for green, I have Wilt. I want to start with Wilt. Is that okay with everyone? Oh, that's, that's low in the... One generic... Wait, wait, wait. What about Barrier Breach? Barrier breach. No, we started all the way from the bottom. <laughs> from from green is barrier breach in green. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm starting from the bottom and going up. So wilt is one generic, one green. Destroy target artifact or enchantment. Cycle two. Naturalize. So that's called. Naturalize one upside. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, naturalize with cycle. Yes. Time me up. This goes in cube. Yeah. Yeah. It o does. Open cube, cube is MVP. This is MVP. Open. Um, it certainly deserves notice, though. It's a fantastic effect. Um, if you find yourself lacking the right utilities, like, this is so good because it's, if you don't need to destroy an artifact or enchantment, then just get a different card, okay? Which can also operate at instant speed. And again, mm -hmm. because I'm working in reverse order here, <laughs> I have Vivian Monsters Advocate. It's only noteworthy... Yeah, I want to get your opinions on it, because I definitely talked about this in the past, but it's three generic, double green, legendary Planeswalker Vivian. You may look at the top card of your library at any time. You may cast creature spells from the top of your library. Plus one, create a 3-3 three, three green breeze creature token, but uh, your choice of vigilance reach. That one doesn't matter. Negative two, when you cast your next creature spell this turn, search your library for a creature card with lesser converted mana cost, put it onto the battlefield, shuffle your library. That's why you play it. Yeah, it's minus two. Yeah, that's it. It's the tutor ability to the battlefield is very cool. 
I mean, obviously Cube loves this because it's a walker that protects itself. But yes, like this is how you get combo pieces onto the battlefield. Um, does Sabala want this? Would you play this in Sabala? Probably not. Probably really? not. Really? No, it's... Um... So there's a certain point in Savala where you just need mass draw. Like, I think drawing is more important than tutoring. That seems weird to say, but you're wor you're waiting on a critical mass of things to happen. A reliable amount of untaps, a reliable amount of minor draw effects, major draw effects, and big creatures, right? So, sure. you know, you, can, you can't always have the perfect hand and expect to get away with it either. You know, sometimes you're going to get stopped. So having more cards in hand is just more valuable in that particular list because you're going to want to have more protection again big creatures big draw spells and then once you've got like 20 some odd cards in hand there's very few things that are going to stop you at that point unless you drew a bunch of lands where this is helping you get one critical creature i mean mm -hmm. it is still a viable tutor i think you should consider it my savala list has 22 creatures 20 Three creatures? I have to check the creature count. So there's certainly a, a threshold of creatures for this to be reliable in getting something. But do mind you, it does need to cost less than the creatures. So, you know, you're not going to fish everything that you need out of your list. You're not going to trade a Rex Reclamation Sage up to a Tamir Saber too. It's not going to work that way. But you will be able to get, well, like I was saying, untappers. And we only have so many creature-based untappers, right? So uh, the... Uh, Wirewood Symbiote, the Quirion Ranger, and the Scrib Ranger, um, most of the deck is going to hit those things. So at least there's that. So ideally, you would drop like a Ravaging Rift Worm, get my Scrib Ranger. I am able to tap for mana off the, um, you know, Ravaging Rift Worm, untap Savala, get more mana, play that big draw effect, or, you know, play another tutor. Sure. But you can also do like, for example, Scrib Ranger and get a Dreadnought. Yeah, so the only, issue, only issue with that instance, though, is that the Phyrexian Dreadnought's going to hit the field before the Scrib Ranger. So I'm only going to be able to tap for 12 mana, but, I mean, it's only it's 12 mana. So Only 12 mana, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm all about leveraging mm -hmm. these effects in Savala to get the utmost I can out of them. I know, it seems greedy, but I like, I, if I'm not doing as much as I can with the card, it feels like I'm wasting potential. Um, I know that seems weird. Like 24 mana is a lot more than 12 mana. But if you don't yeah. have anything in your hand to leverage it, then it's it's just useless. So I feel like draw in Savala is that much more important than tutoring. So between you know the Planeswalkers I have, Garouk and, and Vivian, I, Garouk is better. And any effect that's going to let me just massively draw is, is generally better. That doesn't mean Vivian's bad or that you shouldn't play her there. I, I'm sure she's viable in other commanders too. Um, but I don't know if I'm going to put her in Savala yet. I'll probably have own a copy, like, though. I'll own a copy. I would like to say one thing is don't underestimate the passive, the static ability. Oh, my God. That, no, no, that, no, that, no. Thing, that thing gives you consistency that Garruk does not. Yes. Because if Garruk should draw cards, you need to kill him. In this case, you get an incidental um, advantage just by her being there. Mm -hmm. And even then, she protects herself just plusing, which is insane. It's just straight nuts that we can. Uh, this place Walker gives you advantage by being there and defends herself by gaining loyalty. I obviously this is not CDH. Yeah. Let's be honest. This is not CDH because, as you said in Salvala, you prefer Garuk. Same cost. It's three green. You play more green. Who cares? Yeah. And you draw cards and make a uh, uh, make a beast, a three-three beast. Even yeah. even then. Sometimes. However. Make a beast, but... Rarely. Yeah. It's usually How, Soul's however, Majesty, I think is what it's However, this will see play in Pioneer and Modern, for sure, because big green decks will love this card. <clears throat> it gives consistency to those decks that are so volatile and super explosive and then run out of gas instantly. Mm -hmm. With this, you don't, you don't even need to tutor. You just drop her, make a 3-3, three, three, make a 3-3, three, three, make a 3-3, three, three, and then do the and, Oracle, the Oracle in the power cube, In the Power Cube community, this is a slam dunk. I mean, yes. we're no short of five mana great green walkers, but this easily like knocks some of them out of the list. Like even uh, Nissa World Waker or uh, Wild Speaker. Like this this is so good. This is so good. That's, a, that's a hot take. This, yeah, no, no, this, this card is a Nisa? slam dunk. I, a I'm, I'm sorry, but... You will never convince me that this is better than Nisa. I'm sorry. 
I'm it's sorry. up there. It's up there. It's up there, but this time. Nissa... No, no. I know you so love good. it. I mean, to, so to argue for Vivian over Nissa, again, the static effects on Vivian really do help with your consistency. And if you need a tutor and you're playing a combo cube, that top creature of your deck could be the catalyst for that negative two, just plummeting you into combo land. You know what I'm saying? True. I, true. I do agree. It's yeah. it's a it's negligible when you don't when you're not considering the entirety of the card, but the ability being there to just play the top of your deck if it's a creature is super super viable. And uh, just giving you that information too, just being able to see the top of your deck before you fetch, see see the top of your deck before you do, do anything really any shot. You don't have to reveal play. anything. You yeah, just, you just I mean look. So future side, so done. Pure future side. No, mm -hmm. I agree. I, I think Vivian deserves maybe just even a little bit more attention than I'm giving her. Um, I'm sure there's something you can do as well with the playing creature off the top of your deck. There's got to be some viable. Yeah, just fetch lands. Yeah, fetch lands. Just uh, shuffle and keep going. Is there anything else? You remove your remote lands. Mentioned. Yeah, that's all I want to say. That was it. You, Did you say barrier Co breach? Kogla, Kogla. <laughs> Wait, which one? You don't uh, like Kogla? I don't. I don't think anything else needs to say about Kogla. I put together a three-card combo. For Kogla. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think it's a viable card in Cube too. I mean, I I might want to look to this card. I think it does a lot of cool things, and um, there's a lot of humans I can bounce with this, at least in Power Cube. I think Kogla's. Ace. Kogla slaps. He slaps. Kogla slaps. <laughs> and it's a it's a. What's the Trigon Predator? But it's on swing. It's not even. It only had to hit someone. Kogla's good. <laughs> I was thinking about putting Kogla in Savala only because if I had Hyrex Tower Scout, Kogla, and Savala, if I just mm -hmm. tooth and nail those those two cards, you you win the game. Yeah. Well, you have infinite mana. You just need an outlet. That's really not. That's really not bad. I mean, so you obviously but need an outlet in your hand. All right. <laughs> Tamir is better. Tamir is better. Yeah. Tamir is better. Because yeah. there's only two humans in the deck. It's Eternal Witness, which is actually really valuable. Like Eternal Witness, Kogla lets you loop spells from your graveyard. So your benefactor's drought. Who cares about the untap at this point? I have the infinite mana. Let me just go ahead and draw a card off of Benefactor's Drought because it cantrips. So oh. you can use Eternal Witness in certain loops, but it, the Hyrex Tower Scout specifically with Kogla has the power enough to give you infinite mana off of just those three cards. So it is it is potent for getting infinite mana. Again, you still need an outlet, um, but I mean, it's Savala, so you should hopefully have one in your hand. And if that if that gets countered, then you're just gonna have to wait around with a giant monkey, and that's okay too. I think that's okay. It's still, I mean, you have a seven six that slaps, and if you swing, you can just you have it a just natural breaks things. I know it just yes. breaks things. Um, I, I don't know how good it'll be though. I don't know either, man. But again, it, it allows you to do those eternal witness loops. So I, I took out um, Somberwald Stag, but if I wanted to add Kogla as a combo piece, you can loop um, Kogla to kill off any 3-3 three, three beasties you give your opponents, right? So if you loop eternal witness, which you can do with Kogla, right? We just discussed that. You can loop eternal witness to do beast within, destroy all the lands, destroy all the creatures, and just bounce Kogla with Cloudstone Curio, with any sort of bounce effect that's in the deck. Tamir Saber 2 is bringing him out at this point. And then you can use Kogla to kill those things. It's actually, it's it's not bad. It's really not bad. I mean, I've seen people, I don't know, I, I could see this being viable. It just needs an outlet, unfortunately. It's not like, it's gonna be very hard to draw with Savala's ability as well with him out because he's got seven power. So you're not gonna be able to bounce. I mean, if you had a human that you could bounce that was more potent, to draw cards, maybe. I don't know. Did you want to talk about Barrier Breach, Justin? So how important is it to hit enchantments um, in, like, mono green? Like, you can hit up to three with this, so that's interesting, and it cycles, but is it the fact that it's only tied to enchantments, totally pushing it out of EDH or CDH in general? Does it? Do you guys value artifacts or enchantments more on baseline? Artifacts. Artifacts? Gems. 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 I'm not going to 
I don't really counter your artifacts. I like certain enchantments are backbreaking. Like you land that Remora, you land that Rhystic Study, you land that Smothering Tooth, and I have to deal with that for the rest of the freaking game. Your artifacts, so what? You're ramping. Like you're gonna make yourself public en enemy number one, but you land a good enchantment, you just like exponentially like elevate yourself. So you know what to piggyback on this because I do run Hermit Druid in Marath, and it that that requires you to build your list a particular way. You can't do the Hermit Druid thing if you have um, basics, Basic. right? So sure. if someone lands the Blood Moon, if someone lands one of those effects, the back to basics, I would yeah. I would have to leverage my Dorks or some form of other mana and use Barrier Breach, and I can use Barrier Breach to destroy a few value pieces as well as that uh, that Blood Moon. So that's actually not, I mean, or back to basics is really the, the back breaking one. So barrier mm -hmm. breach, just to, to recap, um, it should be on the screen, but for folks listening, it's two generic, one green, instant speed, exile up to three, target enchantment, cycling two. So yeah, maybe, maybe if the deck is hampered that much by enchantments, it, it does warrant a spot in the list. Mm -hmm. three, three CMC seems a lot, but it's, that's actually really viable. I, I agree with you. There's some really damning enchantments out there. I, I don't think enchantments, I mean, even just having a smothering tithe against you in certain games is just going to be annoying. Like you don't want to have to think about the smothering tithe and giving that person incremental value, especially if they've got a commander that's just leveraging the free mana, you know? Yeah, right. I mean, view's a little skewed because we play a lot of monocolor. And at least in mono green, this seems like something that could be more viable than it actually is when you have access to all these other colors. Yeah. I actually don't think this card will see play because it fights for the spot with Force of Vigor. You play five Vigor colors! Is huh? What? I said Ernesto plays five colors. Yeah, that's true. You don't even have to say it in five colors. It's Force of Vigor. Why would you play you know, this know. Force, of Force of Vigor? Amazing. I think Force that, that of Vigor. Was so so, say you're, you're under a Blood Moon. Okay, Force of Vigor. That's your basics. Force of Vigor. Yeah. You don't even need to cast mana. You don't need to say, oh, I don't have a green dork. What am I going to do? Like, screw it. It's, not, it's dead now. Yeah. Free spells. Yeah, man. Free spells are good. Spells <laughs> Who are knew? <laughs> Who knew? Guys. So, guys, I think that just about covers it. Once uh, let me give a second, like a quick view, uh, just in case for people that are watching, why we are not mentioning mutate creatures, it's because mutate creatures in CDH are slow and they're bad. For CDH, for casuals, there's lists for that, so you can just assemble whatever you want, the world is your oyster. But just to guys let you know before people ask, us, oh, why am I discussing this mutate card or the other one or this one? It's because they're bad. <laughs> Nothing personal. It's just they're slow for CDH. For CDH, yes. For CDH specifically. And it has to be non-human. And some of the, if not the most played um, uh, race in CDH is human. So you don't really you don't get that much value. Just to note why. Yeah. Uh, aside from that, I don't think so. Do you care about another untapper for one green in Salvala? Is it the plus one plus three? Because there's yeah, better. Yeah, there's yeah. better. So I think oh, just, um, just I think some people might want to consider that for Marwin at most. At yes. most. But in Savala, uh, no. I mean, you want your untappers to be tethered to something permanent, generally speaking. If we got more untap based creatures, uh, that would be excellent. Again, like the Hyrix Tower Scout was most recently released in Theros when it ETBs on tap a thing. That's great because we rely on those bounce effects to get the ball rolling. Um, one time instant is okay. Um, I would recommend things like Vitalize to untap your whole army. You know, you can use all of your dorks now, not just Savala. It, that is relevant, just having the subsequent mana from the rest of your dorks as opposed to one thing. And the plus one, plus three isn't really doing you any favors. So uh, if you were going to go for an untap, um, again, the only one I run that does that is Blossoming Defense because it is also a form of protection, right? So it's yeah. hexproof, right? Something like that. You get hexproof. And plus two, plus two. Yes. Something, fix, something along fix. those lines. Yes. I hate that card because I lose to it in effect. I hate effect. Uh, I hate that mechanic. <laughs> So are, we talk, huh? are we going to talk about multicolor and lands? Yes. Yeah. Now we're moving to multicolor. Thank you for the segue, Justin. Can we start in lands. It's so simple. There's only a couple that are really good. Yeah. 
Yeah. Let's move to Lens first, so it's easier for everyone. You want to like, hear? I think people are most excited about these Triumphs. Um, the Tricycle Lens. The Tricycle Lens. I know for Cube, this is a slam dunk, and it's an incomplete cycle, but this is so nice, and I really like the uh, comic book style ones. And I even think in CEDH, there is going to be lists that might want at least one of these. Yes. Nagila. Yes, yes, yes. I'm yes. going to be playing at least one or two Nagila. The the yes. Rock, the Demon one, for sure goes into Nagila because it gives her all the mana she, she wants at, at that point, which like Demon probably the, the color you play the most in that list. Yeah. Aside, aside from that, probably it's going to be the Timur and the Jeskai, or maybe... <sighs> I wish I had a Grixis or something. That would be even better. But probably yes, yeah, Grixis would have been really nice too, oh. because I mean, Kess would have ran that. These decks would, yes, they're slow. Yes, they come into play tapped, but to have that access to mana, um, is this <clears throat> better or worse than like a card like Tarnish Cytadel? Oh, Tarnish Citadel. Oh, I like, I, okay, so I'm gonna throw my, my hat in the ring first. I do think Tarnish Citadel, I think your rainbow lands are ultimately gonna be more valuable. Just the ability to get the color on command is great. You do miss, you, it, you are absent from mm -hmm. thinning your deck and the fact that you can just, honestly on a slow turn, there's a lot of games, like if your deck is not uh, breakneck speeds like Zavala, um, you're not going to care that the land comes into play tapped. So it's okay to fetch it at the end of your opponent's turn, get it untapped. I mean, there, yes. I think that's the, the instance you're going to go for the tri land anyways. Otherwise, you know, you're always going to value your dual lands this much more than the tri lands. But I do think that rainbow lands are more effective by nature. Just the, the nature of CDH, you want to have the ability to not only effectively combo immediately, but also stop other people from comboing. Uh, so, and, and again, these are only three colors. I mean, you're getting five potential colors from something like Tarnished Citadel. Although I know Ernesto has thoughts on, on Tarnished Citadel for, in particular, I, I'm extending this to Rainbow Lands entirely. I think they're they're generally better than the Tri Lands, but go ahead, Ernesto. I actually, you guys know this, I hate Tarnished Citadel. Me too. I hate that card so much. That bolt tree, oh, you want to fix it? It's a bolt to the face. Like, what are you saying? In the decks I, I could play, which is Nagila, I'm already playing Ad Nos, as more as a value, not as a win. And this is three or four cards less I'm seeing. That's not worth. Of course, in those lists, it's rainbow all the way up, then it's duels, then it's shocklands, then it's the rest. Yes. I would probably say this one's go in between Shocklands and Duels, these ones. Obviously, you can't abuse them. You can't play all five because you will lose. You lose all the acceleration that Patrick was saying, that you will like to have those lands and that for the fixing. Mm -hmm. But I find myself also, as, as Patrick said, lots of times fetching EOD for a Shockland tapped. Even in freaking Jorah, I do it a lot. I yeah. just yeah. fetch a yeah. Shockland. In this case, why would I fetch a Shockland when I can fetch this land that fixes all the problems I need. Well, if I have the Timur and the Absent Ones and the Revy, I don't need anything else. I need those two lands, some creatures, and I win. <laughs> and even better, just to piggyback on that thought, I like the dual lands, the cycle, I don't know if they finished it yet, but there's a cycle of dual lands that also cycle for two that come into play tap. I actually, oh, the, um, the Sendikar ones. Like the um, irrigated, irrigated yeah, slams or yeah. something. No, the Amonkin one. Yeah, the Amonkin yeah, ones. The Amonkin ones. I think those are still really valuable too because it mid to late game, say you draw this over your shock lands, like late game, a shock land does nothing for me, but late game, a cycle land lets me get a different card. And, and sometimes that can be evaluated as better. I mean, I, I think that this has that added benefit, but it being a triple colored land definitely puts it a step above the cycle jewels. I think the cycle yes. triples are are really good. So obviously, if your list can use it, you're not going to use all of them. But one or two, one or two yep. is is probably going to be potent enough. Justin, do you think you do you imagine you would use these in any multi list? Do you like them? Oh, I totally would. Um, I'd at least include one or two if I was playing multicolor, and uh, at least for cube, like these are these are auto includes. Like 
there's no there's no second guessing these these are fantastic these like are we're cool. even playing the slow like i have 720 power cube and we're even playing the slow fetches like the mirage fetches where they enter tapped and then they can uh search out as a fetch land and just with the extra fetches like grabbing these tri lands is so good and i don't even care like in cdh like I'm, I'm running at least one or two of these because like as ernesto said um a lot of the time you do search out a shot plan that enters tapped anyway because you don't want to take the bolt to a face because you're playing black and your resources and your life matter um and to have just an additional color tacked onto that very very good mm -hmm. I think um I think that pretty much sums up tri lands for you. Are they valuable? I, yeah. For I have one thought because I, I'm not sure about this one. I did not consult with my judge friend. Is this something that's re that's relevant? Because all basic lands read, say for example, mountain tap add red to your mana pool, and that's basic in all the basic lands. These are typed as well, so the, for example, the upside is Plains, Forest, Swamp. Is it tapped already and assumed that they say tapped and add for these colors? Because this it's on the reminder text of these lands. What, what I'm trying to get is to, does this mean that you cannot play them in, for example, two color decks? If you want extra fixing for some random reason. I'm not sure about that one. You can now play this in a two-color deck. Ah, I thought so. That was, that was my thought, my original thought. Because but it is sample... still a forest, yeah. It has yeah. the mana symbol. Yeah, no, but the, the mana symbol, it's on the reminder deck. If you read saying. the card. I get what you're saying. Yeah. That's the difference. But they are tight, and the tight, and each basic lens is, has the actual rules text of saying, add this to your mana. Hmm. That's so, interesting. Yeah. So I wanted to actually consult with my judge friend just to be sure because someone raised yeah. this and I, I was like, no, that doesn't make sense. It shouldn't be allowed. But now it got me thinking that maybe I'm not so sure about that. Yeah, I mean, we got companions, right? Why the hell not? Oh, I think it's just for formatting. I think it's just for formatting to make the card look nice. I, I think it's just assumed that you should know that if you're in CDH or if you're playing EDH that you cannot just include a forest into your freaking uh is it deck like yeah. that but i mean <laughs> yes that's not gonna work why would you want it why would you want it send triplets send triplets <laughs> yeah you, you would run that no but i don't, I don't have esper oh right yeah, you know what I mean. yeah, yeah. why even then yeah. that's why i play the rainbow lands yeah, yeah. so guys <laughs> on that note i did want to talk about one more land that i think is pretty viable uh justin pointed out to me a little while ago but bonders enclave which is a land that taps for a generic uh, but it also has the effect, the added effect of three generic tap, draw a card. You activate this ability only if you control a creature with four or greater power. So in those decks where you're, you're, you're obviously not going to break past three colors for a utility land that does this. So it's predominantly going to be for dual color, mono colored list, right? Also, I think it's very dependent on your deck featuring and or your commander featuring a lot of power for or greater, but otherwise you have a draw effect that you can use at instant speed, right? I think that if you can get away with the generic, this is a actually really solid utility land. Anytime I have an effect that is positive and doesn't self-sacrifice, I'm gonna I'm gonna evaluate it highly. So is this for every list? No, but I think Neheb will enjoy this. Like if again, Neheb needs a critical mass of cards to discard to effectively wheel and play his package, his game plan. So instead of starting that attack turn with four cards, having five, it's actually very valuable. Same thing with Savala. Like if I'm slow rolling, I don't have what I need. I can use the mana I get, the seven mana I get off of Kogla to draw a card, see what I have, four mana left. Oh, thank God I just drew that draw effect I needed. You know what I mean? So this is <clears throat> situationally beneficial. I don't know about you guys. There's certainly list for this, it's not going to slot into every list, obviously. No. It's super narrow. The issue with this card is that it fights for, for the slot with Arch of Raska, which Arch of Raska is the um, Ascend or something like that. Ascend, Just yeah. Per yeah, yeah. Stem permanence, which in CDH, obviously, the longer the game goes, it's easier to achieve. And sometimes someone deluges you and you now you have a, a waste instead of something that draws your cards. 
Sure, the difference of two mana is big because Arch of Rask has five mana to draw a card, but it's the limitation, it's so easy to achieve compared to this that I don't know if it's, this is that good. Like honestly, I think it depends on your deck. I think that in sure. some like in some lists, it will be easier to achieve a creature with power four or greater. It's going to be easier True. to have that than than having ten permanents at any given time. Also, the I run Archivaraska in Balan because Balan he's going to take the game that far, and I'll get the draw effect. You know what's funny? I could even use this card in Balan because generally speaking, I'm going to have something with a piece of equipment that's just going to put him at four anyways. So if this might even be better than Arch of Araska in that particular list. But again, we generally hit that critical mass in, in Milan where you have 10 so permits. Don't hate two. me, but don't think I'm terrible. But is this even viable in Gitrog? Just like, let's say you don't have a discard outlet and this can get you that eight card. I mean, it's going to trigger with Gitrog because you can draw a card and Gitrog has enough power to make this activated. Um, is this just total trash or like would Gitrog even like bat an eye at this? I honestly cannot say. I would like Mikey's feedback on that because would, he's, the, yeah, he's, he's the frog player from us. And honestly, I don't know. I think I probably prefer a cycle land over this, like a nurturing beat or something okay. before yeah. this, because yeah. it can sacrifice itself. And the limitation, again, as we said, it's hard to make. Sometimes the frog doesn't stick, and you have a freaking waste. Again, the same, sure. same issue. Even frog needs to build belt with. <laughs> frog is so uh, powerful and oppressive that you need to get rid of. And if you don't have it, then the land is just useless. But let I don't know. Frog... I... Let the frog sacrifice a few lands first, and then then screw with him. So that when he has, he's deficient on mana. Then screw with the frog. <laughs> that way, life is so much easier on everyone. Um, Just the ability on the stack. Now I'm going to remove your frog. Yeah, exactly. that's, 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 that's how you play or, with or, that. Or, or wait, wait, wait. The not greedy play of sucking all your lands but one. <laughs> That was a not really played that What one. is this? Ca the actual Cataclysm? Because I can show you that card. It's a lot better than what you were pointing out earlier. <laughs> no, no, no. We were playing a game with Mikey. This was a recurring meme. And he was playing Frog. And he sacked, he was like, I don't know, seven, eight lands. He sacked, sacked all his land but one. And before this, he said, this is not a greedy play. And sacked, started sacking. Oh, but squandered resources? Yes. <laughs> or something like that. It's a sack outlet. Enough of that. Only one land. And he fizzled. <laughs> but it was not a good play. <laughs> but if he had this card, if he had this card, he could at least draw a card. So the fizzle would feel less bad. Uh, so I have two cards that jump to me in multicore because it like, strikes me super close, which is North Septimus Walker and Channel Force. I'm going to start with Channel Force. Um, channel Force? What channel. Channel Force. Channel Force. It's uh, two and um, Iset. It's instant um, and common. Reads as, a, in, as an additional cost to cast this spell, discard X cards, and then target player draws X cards. Channel force deals X damage up to one creature or planes walk. So, this is a pretty good card in real. I think we cut it from the list when we were making it. But aside from that, the idea of cycling your hand and killing something relevant in instant speed, I don't know about you guys, but for me, that's gas. <laughs> Keep in mind. Yes. Keep in mind, this is an additional cost, yes. so if this is countered, yes. you are screwed. Yes, you're done. And that's why I don't like it. And you just spent four mana for it, so... <laughs> it's instant, though. It's like Lion's Eye Diamond in Naramea, where, where at first you're like, I, uh, yes, yes, three free mana, and discard my hand, I'm gonna go off with no counters, but it's like, you get countered, and it's just... Why were, you playing, that why were you playing that card? You shouldn't have been. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Feeds, feeds Underworld Bridge as well, like, it's not the best, of course, like, why would you play this over Wheel of Fortune? But the upside of killing something and fixing your hand, I think it's way Okay, too. it has a high ceiling, but a it's very a, low floor. Yes, <laughs> you need to kind of, like, play Boseju to make it, this will happen, and then you get Nasu Reversal, and then you're ultra sad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because they just have the eggs for free. <laughs> anyway. I think it's okay. That's, that, that's, my thoughts, that's my thoughts on Channel Force. I think that guess. the next card we should talk about is probably one of the better multicolored spells that came out. Uh, Kinnon, Bonder, Prodigy. 
the... Oh, oh no. Oh, we're going there. So we already going there? Oh. Um, oh. I'm just going, I'm going down the list this time. So alphabetically speaking, we went, we went there. Human Druid. So there's one human for you. 2-2. Two, two. Whenever you tap a non-land permanent for mana, add one mana of any type that permanent could produce. And then it has the ability to pay five generic, one green, one blue. Look at the top five cards of your library. You may put a non-human creature card from among them onto the battlefield for the rest of the bottom of your library in a random order. Thoughts? Pass out one of them. I, I, I hate this card. What do you hate? I hate, I hate this card. So this slots, like, I mean, partner, anything with Thrasios can play this, and it's like everything that you ever had now taps for double, and that's really, really good. And yes, this could be its own commander, um, and we, we've all talked about how this goes infinite with Basalt Monolith, but what doesn't make a Basalt Monolith break? But it's just, <laughs> it's just a really good card, and yes, we talk in the cube community that Simic is... Um, usually the bastard child. You don't get a lot of good things, and ever since Hydroid Hydro Crassus, yeah. Well, ever since he came along, we have been slowly increasing our Simic brethren. And um, this card, I don't think Man this is good, for you, but this is a very good Simic card in general, and that's good to see. I just don't want to play against this. Master Oko, come on. I, I'm gonna say one card for Cube with this card. Only one. Upheaval. I'm out. Ah, yes. I'm out. I'm out. Well, I mean, up people is just busted. So this is like. <laughs> yeah. I'll be honest. I hate this card. I do this like card, it. I like it in cube, though. So overloaded. Why does it have true abilities? Being a freaking bear. Sure, That's it's a myth. Yeah. It's, it's Why does it have myth. to be the ramp and the outlet? Didn't they learn anything with Racius at this point? Didn't well, they learn anything? The re so they did tack on a higher activation cost, obviously, than Thrasios. They still haven't learned because no <laughs> he, he helps produce the mana to do the thing anyways. It's like exactly. a better it's a better training grounds in Thrasios as well, but who gives a shit? All my shit is tapping for this much more out, outside of lands. Oh my god. Um it's a gross. This with Mox Amber. <laughs> this with Mox this with any Moxin. Right, so if you're talking about power cube, this with any moxin, and you're just like ramping like a fiend. Um, whatever your strategy was, it's going to be that much more efficient. Uh, Mana ball taps for four. He's yeah, very good. He's <laughs> very good. I think we can all agree on that. I think notably, oh. Grim Monolith can infinitely tap and untap with Mesmeric Orb. So there's something to to fool with. I mean, that's that's something I would do. Um, <laughs> Yeah, you are a super advocate for that card, for the, for the Mesmeric Orb. I love Mesmeric Orb. Look, if your strategy can pull shit out of your graveyard and you don't mind the the milling, then then go for it. Um, I think I think Mesmeric Orb doesn't get enough credit as a combo card. And it is a very relevant stacks piece, though. I gotta say, every time I've played that card, it has effectively changed the outcome of my opponent's games. Um, and and, yep. and and only bettered mine. Uh, I think it could certainly see more play uh, outside of combos. But you said you wanted to talk about Narset, the ancient wine. Uh, later, because she's not for City. Let's be honest, she's not. It's just if you end up with her, you're fine. And the minus is kind of like you can kill something, which it's pretty good. So are we talking about another Simic card then? Nah, let me finish. Let me finish with Narset. Yeah, sure, so I can. Let me do it, just so I can just get it out, sure. get it out of my chest, finally. So, we have a new Narset. Narset is actually playable in Modern, which is amazing, this one. Is uh, she, well, yes, what, deck play is what deck plays this? Just Sky Control. Okay, <laughs> just, <laughs> just, just, I just want to know. I, I don't know The only thing that this doesn't do for the um, for Jessica, it does, doesn't draw cards uh, by plusing, which yeah. is okay. the thing you need the most. But she reads Narset Adation Way, one and just guy, Mythic, Prince Walker Narset, blah blah blah. Enters with four loyalty, so she dodges bolt by default. Blessing, you gain two life, so goodbye, mono red matchup, it's already done. <clears throat> Add uh, blue, red, or white to your mana pool, spend this mana only to cast a non creature spell. If you're playing uh, control, you're already doing it, so you don't care. Uh, minus two, you draw a card, that's the big one. And you discard of something, so you're a ramage, and then the card you discarded. You deal damage to a creature of Transwalker equal to a CTMC. That's pretty big. It's a removal in under a ramage, the whole effect. It's it's good. It's a really it's what really control wants to have um card uh, selection and removal and the stacked on the same thing. 
it's there. Then, if you get the emblem, the game should be done. Uh, games there uh, as most emblems do. This one reads: uh, whenever you cast an non creature spell, this emblem shocks something, and then you just you just play the control game, which is what you want to do already. Just plus 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 emblem, and then oh, counter bolt uh, shock, country shock. In modern, it's not obviously not CDH playable, but modern and pioneer will love her. Mm. Maybe we'll make some ways of legacy in We're some. We're standard. You think this is gonna be a. Oh standard? yeah! Oh yeah! 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 yeah. yeah. I yeah. think so. Yeah. Okay. It's gonna be good. Um, if a if a just guy shell comes out. Okay. One card I would like to discuss, because Narset, that's Narset, and we kind of dodge, uh, since we go from the top to the to the bottom, is Death's Oasis. Okay. That, that card, yeah. Mm. That card is uh, absent. It's a uh, Death Oasis is an absent enchantment rare, and it reads the uh, the non important part is one and suck it, and you gain life equals to the converted mana cost among creatures you control, pointless. But the other ability is um, anti wrath synergy, which me reads whenever a non token creature you control dies, put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard, then return a creature card with lesser converted mana cost than the creature that died from your graveyard to your hand. So, this... how are you breaking this? KCI. 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 Yeah. Explain that. Because no creature spell, uh, no creature, uh, no token creature dies. So you have the troller and you have the retriever. It's three two. So you start you mill yourself infinitely, then choose your winged. So do you even need this in KCI? Because KCI can do itself. It's not allowed by itself. That's the thing. Okay, so this with, takes with the this, place of a spell this, bomb? This, this in your deck, basically. So th this takes the place of a spell bomb? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Not the red one, of course, but one of the spell bombs. Yeah, sure. Okay, so this is like... So KCI needs like the outlet or the loopable casting exploding spell bomb to kill somebody. So instead, this is like a means to finding those? Yeah. It just makes your combo never fizzle because you just dump your library in your graveyard yeah. and just choose whatever you want. Because there will be creatures already there. Mm. And you, your graveyard becomes your library in that sense. Your See, for, this, for a list to really leverage KCI, it's like a very specific list. And I don't know if Abzan is the colors to do that. Right, but it's, a, us, it's an interesting thought. It's an interesting thought to play with this. I just don't... Um, it's not it's that never good. struck me as like being any type of CDH viable. It's certainly a potential combo piece, though. I could see that. I don't see it's very mana color intensive that it might not be able to functionally go off the way you'd like, particularly as the combo piece is generating generic mana. So it's like it's not going to help you set this up, but. You know, mm -hmm. it could just be the thing you cast that turn if the KCI was out and or you put it out on a turn prior because no one's really going to care that it's there, generally speaking. Um, uh, it, but, you know, it, it could be a KCI card. I think it's fine. I don't know. I think I, it's more like an anti-wrath card than KCI enabler. KCI was the first thing that came to my mind. But probably like you could do this in an aristocrat's deck, maybe. Yeah. Same thing. Just get the value back. Uh, the, the only but, other multicolored card I personally wanted to talk about was... Parcel Beast. I don't know if you guys have seen this yet. Oh, sure. yeah. Two, I like this card. I so, like this card a lot. Two generic, one green, one blue. A mutate cost of one green, one blue. You're going to mutate it. Um, once you read the ability, you'll, you'll see why. Uh, one generic tap. Look at the top card of your library. If it's a land, you may put it onto the battlefield. If you don't put the card onto the battlefield, put it into your hand. So that sounds very familiar, doesn't it? Where did I read this? Gracias. <laughs> So yeah, dude, they're just like they're just giving Thrasios abilities left and right right now. So if you have it attached to something like Glimmer Bell or anything that has an activated ability that says a Glimmer Bell in this sense is be generic blue, untap Glimmer Bell. Mind you, you need to have had made infinite mana or just a way to leverage this combo for infinite mana. But you can essentially make this mutator a Thrasios at outlet, right? So Thrasios is generic. So he can just bypass the blue needed from Glimmer Bell, but you can mutate your very own Thrasios is what I'm saying. This little chemistry kit, you're able to mutate your very own Thrasios 
within the 99. I mean, you're likely gonna run Thrasios over having some sort of combo like this, but that is notice, uh, notable that it does function as an outlet, basically, after infinite mana's game. You do need blue. So, like, Thrasios. Yeah. yeah. My question is this, why would you play this over Thrasios? You wouldn't. You would have you would, you would have both if you want. I mean, the thing is just a value piece regardless. I mean, like, I can it see is, myself, it is a value piece. why yeah. the hell wouldn't I want to just mutate this for one green, one blue, and be able to do the same thing Thrasios does for Every one, turn. one generic and a tap. And again, any any form of outlet like this with Umbral Mantle is the same cost as Thrasios, actually, because it's four generic with the tapping and untapping. So uh, Umbral Mantle in this, just by itself, is Thrasios, technically, once you have infinite mana. Uh, Sans mutating to anything particularly relevant. Um, but I guess you can mutate this onto a creature that has haste and then just start going that way. Um, I, I like Parcel Beast a lot. It's a, clearly a good card. Uh, you don't need to argue whether this is good. It's very good. Um, its viability or its its chance for play, I think, depends on your deck and your deck building. It's going to be relevant to you or it's not going to be relevant to you. It's a nice value piece. You think <clears> so? <throat> yeah. I do, I do. I like this card. Um, I don't think it makes every list, obviously, but for decks that like to grind, um, I mean, it's just, it's there's no denying that this is good value. When you play it, it's casting cost, what it gives you every turn. I like it. Yeah, it's the fixed version of Thracius, man. Mm -hmm. The fact and that it taps, this, yeah. Yes, yes, it's the fixed version because Thracius, the most of the people complain that why is he just a mana sink? Why he can tap? So he's balanced. Yeah. Uh, that's the only complaint people have, and this is obviously the fixed version. And as you said, a, a creature with haste. I don't think uh, you can play a creature and then mutate it on, on the other turn. And mm -hmm. it that way, I think so. It's definitely it's hard to evaluate card because there's no denying this card is good. It's just, is this card even like the bare minimum good enough to even uh, want to be played in CDH? Let That's just the question. Put it this way of the mutate creatures we received, uh, this Simic creature is the best. Yes. In Oof. my opinion. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. yes that I think that, it, that, that it, say something. It has the highest mm -hmm. probability of play. So if you haven't seen Parcel Beast, um, we all like Thracios. This is clearly just another way to get there. And if you're building we... your deck around it, get the untappers in there, and then you can really do some crazy shit with Parcel Beast. Um, there are some other oddities, I think, that kind of deserve a mention, like Skull Prophet, the Ugari creature. So black, green, creature, human, druid, 3-1 body. You can tap it for Golgari, uh, so black or green. Or you can tap it to put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard. Um, this can certainly find its way into certain lists. Like, this is a very... And it's a free one. And it's, it's a free one. one. It's hard. <laughs> it hits really hard, and it, I think it would have been better just functionally as a 1-3. You're probably not going to be swinging with it all too often. But it's very solid for just the self-milling, if you need self-mill in your list, as well as getting, you know, color correcting uh, from turn to turn. Obviously, mm -hmm. it does cost uh, black and green to start that whole thing up. Um, is there any other uh, multicolored spells you guys would like to add to the mix here? Yes, speaking of Golgari, we have dirtled enough with random cards. Let's get to the meat of the things. Fiend Artisan. This card is going to be insane. This card is busted, and this will make Bloodport back. This will give Flash Hulk more power. This will give any Golgari deck more power because it's a freaking survival of the fittest. And, uh, uh, and no. uh, all tactics. This, the this same feels like a Tarmogoyf. So a Tarmogoyf and a Fauna Shaman. It's, <laughs> it's like, I mean, yes, you need the creature on the battlefield for it to work, but like, I, I really like this card too. It's it's very cool and it's very tempting in cube because I like tutor effects and it's, if this could be played in mono green or mono black and it's just good art and I like that it grows, I like that it's a nightmare, <laughs> and I like finding things in my deck, like more tutor effects are very good. What deck would run this in CEDH? Any black-green. Mm, be it's careful with that. It's a pawn. Would, would Nijila run this? Would Nijila run this? Because that's that's where you're drawing your knowledge from. Yeah. You would? Okay, yeah. what would you... Uh, what are you trying to get with this? 
Oracle. Okay. Zimbala. Anything. I sack. I need to sack a creature. Yeah, so it, the water tokens like, oh, bye bye guys, you're done. Yes, I will play this. That's true. Also, also, mm. it's a board on a creature. It's like, yeah, yeah. <sighs> so, so power cube perspective, birthing pod is not good enough. I'm gonna say it right now, and I don't know what what cube oh. thinks birthing pod is good enough, but Vanifair and Pod. They're cute and players like to play them, but they're usually on the lower spectrum of any combo you'd ever want to play. This makes that archetype more viable. This is this is the pod that we've always wanted. True. I can agree with I that. I think it's mostly because of the thing, the limitation with pod and Banifar that has to be one more. So you need the whole ladder of CMCs to actually make pod viable. You have to really work on that deck to make it good. This just yep. like this is just a generic good stuff card. True. For True. that art. Yeah. I really think this card is on the level of magistrate. On the level really? of post card. Yes, 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 oh. yes. This card is good. Dude, it's a board that you can fetch anything. And you can suck tokens to it. This card is insane. Okay. And even then, it just gross. I want to believe. I want to believe, but Magistrate is on a, on another level than this. This is a good card. You but, can suck Magistrate with this. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Why. Would you, you would that? never do that. <laughs> I think. Uh, you, I, I think Fiend Artisan is pretty solid. I agree. I I don't think uh, Pod strategies get enough love. I play Pod just for value and in Commander that is. Uh, not even for combo because you do have to add a lot of dumb cards into your deck to make pod really yeah. accelerate it's just a bunch of ETB untap the thing do the thing again uh, It usually doesn't do much for me, but the fact that you can generate um, From this whatever Costed creature you prefer because of the X and its cost um, You can manipulate this to great effect like uh, Ernesto yeah. was saying you can get that combo piece like that and go you don't have to you know trade up every single time like you would with a pod um it's just it's a little bit better than pod in that sense because you can just sacrifice mm -hmm. a token and get a four drop you don't have to think about going up the levels i can see that being very good again its limitation is that it's a creature it's summoning sick and that the effect is sorcery speed so very much like pod but it's still it's still really viable i could see it being played in commander um, that is yeah. definitely one of the better uh, multicolored cards to come. You can from. even trick because it has uh, the or less keywords, yeah. so you can do it for I don't know three and get Oracle and win on the spot. For example, it can happen. Exactly, exactly. Or Blackboard will love this card. Or if someone were to cast a spell in opposition of you and it didn't affect Fiend Artisan's ability, you can just shift gears and get three and under, like you were saying. You're not, you're not limited. In your choices you're not locked into anything once you start the tutor you can you can go down from there too so if you do yep. need to grab that magistrate instead say fuck you here's the magistrate <laughs> you know what i mean but i mean i don't know you're fun is over lads the fun police has arrived <laughs> um how about that guys how do you guys feel about those multicolored cards any more you want to throw out there real i i mean i i kind of touched on real but anything else i know you built a list are we desire. talking about are we talking about companions? Because at least for Cube, Lutri and Luris are amazing. Lutri, she did so good. She like, did so, so little. You've already talked about how Lutri is so good, but Luris, um, just having, like, this, this is just a good card in your 99. And I know you already touched upon this and how the Discord was helping you build a combo deck with that. But this is a card that's actively going to affect Legacy with Storm. Uh, which ones? Which, which one? Luris. Luris of the Dream Den. You're allowed to cast oh, them. Oh, right. Your Turbo Ad Nauseums, your Lion's Eye Diamond, your Black Lotus. Like, this has applications in Power Cube beyond anything Commander. This Truth. is a very, very good card. Mm -hmm. Truth. It's a mini Mudrotha. Hmm. It, it has a limitation of only one card. And the CMC, but it's three mana compared to six. It's rough, but I like it. I like Lurus. It's good. It's good. It's good. Yeah, at least it's my bad. cube. This is probably the most important card for me to get for my cube. Do you really Fair. think so? Lurus is. Good. Oh yeah. Wow. No shit. 
Oh yeah. I think because I can play this in mono white, mono black. This is just so good. And it's very easy to construct for too. Again, the only limitations on his companionship is that your permanence be under three CMC. So like your spells. Under two. Uh, or under two, excuse me. So your spells can still be uh, higher than that. You're not limited. Yes. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. exactly. And in Power Cube, it's not very difficult to, to construct around that. And Lutri, not much the same. Lutri is going to be very easy to just slot into any one list because there's never going to be a card of same name or like name. Uh, but you want to mention Riel really quick before we close this one out? I know you built a uh, list. Yeah, we built a list with the help of, uh, well, the help of, they mostly did it. I just threw Jank and see what stick. Um, we built a list with Brayden and Mikey on one person of Twitch. It's I think it's somewhere around the, the VOD, but the list is on our Discord if you want to check it out. It's basically a blue-red storm list that just wants to wheel a lot and draw 14 cards each time you wheel, which is pretty good, I'll say. Anyway, real, uh, the card reads Real, the Everwise, One, and is it Legendary Creature, Human Wizard. So, rip the library. It's good. Um, she, it's a 0-3. She reads, Real Neverwise gets plus one plus O for each instant and sorcery in your graveyard. And whenever you discard one or more cards for the first time each turn, draw that many cards. I kind of missed the first part when we were building the deck and I forgot that you can just like, oh, I'm going to wheel a lot and then swing. <laughs> yeah. I forgot that. <laughs> and then Brayden pointed me like, hey man, there's more text to the card than just a second ability. And yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're, but the role you're, of ability is simple. Yeah, you're clearly thinking about leveraging that to some greater effects than being all too concerned about her as a swinger. But she does just beat people down uh, one at a time uh, as you choose. But I think the greater part of her effect is the ability to draw massive cards. I know uh, Brawlin, I think, is the name of the mono red partner. And then there's the flying shark that's Azorius. Um, I think that this, I think that Riel wouldn't be a bad commander for Brawlin and or Glinthorn in the 99 of your deck because you can build a pseudo curiosity set up here Ophidian Eye and very easily get to the maximum hand size of seven and then some and then win off of just mass discarding with Brawlin and Curiosity or yes. Glinthorn and Curiosity so this is another because I know people were talking about Curiosity built with uh, those partners this wouldn't be a bad commander to just have um, with those in your 99 instead. And again, you're drawing so many cards, you'll, you'll get there. I think. Funny, so funny, funny you say that because those oh, are actually spells. Our... What's that? Those you are actually spells. What? Yeah, you heard me. I didn't understand what you were you saying. You get both the really good free spells. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. Truth, truth, truth. Also, what I'm saying is, funny you say those cards, the Glinghawk and the Shark Dude, because those are our actual win cons that we built. I'm gonna build it. I'm gonna build it. Probably. There, you go. there you go. Yeah. Are you gonna build the partners? I'm probably gonna build the partners. Nice. That'd be fun then. I'd love to see. It. I'd love to play it. Yeah. I want to see. Uh, I see you build that and obviously play against it. But guys, what were your favorite cards from Ikoria uh, in Commander 2020? If we missed anything, I mean, at this point, I, I, they don't know, but we've been chatting for an hour and 50 minutes uh, as of re my recording start. Um, so mm -hmm. we, we definitely discussed a few cards today, but if there's anything we missed, just let us know. Obviously, we'd love to hash it out with you in the comments section. We discussed, we discussed one that has, we missed one that has a lot, lot of discussion, which is Giganta, the oh. Rainbow Dork. That's hard. That's hard. It's to hard. Learn. It's hard to leverage, but I think Brendan made a list for that. Just to say, and Najila both pondered this card but we already discussed that you're losing such good cards in your list like mana drain force of will um uh, druid's repository right or yeah. uh like you're losing a lot yeah, of things just will, yeah. it's just not good enough for najila but is this a sisse card um i feel like he lost a lot of his good outlets and things uh good legendaries trying to include this as companion, it's, um, as companion. Yeah. yeah as companion yeah. And he loses Winkons in the in the form of Oracle. Now I think his only straight Winkon is Najila Derby with this. Yeah. And it's kind of like, like should we get the, the, the value, which is insane. Oh, what's just throw this in the 99. Or even possibly just make it yes. your commander. I mean, you could possibly just make this your commander and have it as an infinite mana outlet, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but not necessarily a win con in and of itself. 
I think the allure when Giganta was announced is the fact that you can use it as a companion. You know what I'm saying? Yep. But yep. I don't think it's all, all too valid. But let us know if you've made a list for it. There's so many noises going on around me. I apologize for any noise that you guys are going to pick up on. But gang, I think that's going to close this one out. Um, I'm Patrick. Thank you for joining us on this one. Justin, and that was uh, actually a lot of fun. Those were really oh, yeah? yes. Those damn priest spells, though. I'm really upset. I can't. Oh, use we're gonna be so angry with those. Happy brewing, babies. All right, you made it through to the end. Congratulations. I hope you learned about some new cards in this video. I think we did miss one partner commander or something or other that might have been of interest. Of course, you guys can let us know in the comment section. And of course, let me know about that combo card I mentioned earlier off this video, the white combo card. I didn't bother looking it up because I was more, much more concerned about getting the shout out in for our Patreon backers. Now I'm gonna start in alphabetical order. Jarn, Bjarn, Jarn, the best. Easily one of the best today. So one of four of the best. Brendan, thank you so much for your patronage. Uh, I really appreciate you jumping on board, hooking us up, helping us out. Clyde, you, again, the sun, the moon, the stars, none of them compare to you, Clyde, but you knew that. Frank, thank you so much. I'm a lover of cats too. I just realized you have a cat in your thumbnail. A white one. We have a pure black cat here. Amelie. Super sweet girl. I uh, love the cat, Frank. Love cats. Jared, two R's. Thank you for your patronage. I think there's another Jared here. Or maybe not yet. Okay, well, just, just Jared then. Thank you for your patronage. Again, join the Discord if you haven't yet. Javier, Scar, Mufasa. Mufasa sometimes. I just watched the movie again. Mufasa's a pretty stand-up dude. Mace, thank you so much for your patronage. Jordan, equally one of the sharpest thumbnails I've seen. It's really between Frank and Jordan's thumbnail. The cat, his face, it's tough for me to tell. Josh, thank you for your patronage. Easily one of the best today, so you're two of four. Have I mentioned anyone else? Leon, I don't know you, but I love you. Thank you so much. Luke, dang it. I'm about to watch Doctor Strange. And it makes me think of you every time now. Mahoy Manoy, thank you for your patronage. One of the best today. You made it to the list. Three of four. You're one of the best. Nathan Spencer. Nathan, you're not on the best list yet. You might have been in the past, but not today. I'm sorry. But thank you for your patronage. Yeah, equally as good a patron as anyone else. Nick, just a C. Thank you for your patronage. Oliver. Ugh. Oliver people. Have you seen their glasses? Excellent choice, just like the name Oliver. Running Red, thank you so much for your patronage. Sam, the voice is breaking up. I'm getting all shaking when I think about Sam. <laughs> thank you for your patronage. Shade, that reminds me, was his name Shadow or Shade from Homeward Bound? I don't know why your name just brought up memories of Homeward Bound, the movie with the talking animals. Thank you for your patronage. Shord, thank you for your patronage. And The Holy Knight. Last, certainly not least, you are amongst one of the best today. I don't know if I've said more than four best players, but we need to pitch you all together in a game of Commando. And it is my hope to have Commando games with some of you Patreon backers soon. Of course, I'll talk to you guys about that later. But again, thank you for watching this video. I'm sure I said it in the screen cap, but happy brewing, babies.